Moving forward, we would now like to invite onto the dais former Judge Honorable Supreme Court of India, Justice A.K. Patnaik, who has also written the foreword in the book authored by Mr. Shailendra Kumar, Five Years of Cobweb on GST, Threading the Needle. Request you, sir, to please share your views with us. Dr. P. Tyagarajan, the Finance Minister of Tamil Nadu, Mr. Nagendra Kumar, the author, Mr. Shalendra Kumar, ladies and gentlemen. Now, before I speak on the book and the author, I would like to respond to Mr. Mukesh Patel about what he said about Justice Krishnayar and Nani Palkiwala. Mr. Krishnayar was ideologically totally left. Mr. Nani Palkiwala was ideologically totally right. And yet, Mukesh ji found guru in both of them. Because he is a man concerned with taxes. Whether you are left or right, money or revenue is required by the central government or state government to do work for the poor. Mr. Krishna has stood for the poor, absolutely for the poor. And Nani Palkiwala said, unless you have good fiscal policy, good budget, raise the resources, the state or the central cannot do work for the poor. That is the convergence. You look at what is happening in Great Britain. The last Prime Minister resigned. Why? He thought, she thought that she would ensure a fiscal policy which will bring up the capitalist. That's a right-wing thinking. Rishu Sanak is also a conservative leader. But he thinks this is not the time when this kind of a policy, fiscal policy can be taken up because of various reasons. So this is a very intricate thing. Fiscal policy is a very intricate thing. And mind you, amongst the taxes, income tax does not affect the poor. The indirect taxes like the GST affect the poor very badly. So how it has to be structured, what levies are to be made, is a very, very intricate subject. And with this, I would now come to my pleasure of releasing this book today, authored by Mr. Shalendra Kumar. First of all, I would like to speak about the author. I did not know Mr. Shilan Kumar for long. I was introduced to him by a close friend of his in my office a year back, or less than a year back. And then Mr. Shalendra Kumar started sending him, sending me in WhatsApp is TOL, COB, Web, and I started reading them. And I, and I appreciated his expertise in the subject of fiscal policy and taxation. If you read the book, the introductory part of the book, you find his tremendous interest in GST. He says he developed 
an interest in the GST. When Dr. Vijay Kelkar, who was the head of the task force, took out the reports on direct and indirect taxes in 2002. And since then, Mr. Shalendra Kumar has been pursuing the follow-up, follow-up, follow-up till the GST came to existence in 2017. And it didn't stop there. He continued his interest even after the GST came in 17 years, uh, in 2017. And for five years, he has watched the developments and put them in this book. While giving the foreword, I glanced through the book. And I am I'm, I'm a judge of the Supreme Court, the High Court. I had been a lawyer also. For 20 and a half years, I practiced law, including taxation law. But during our times, there was no GST. When you practiced or when I was judge, there was no GST. There was first, you know, uh, sales tax, then VAT, then of course there was central excise. All those fields I practiced, income tax also. But there was no GST. GST, as you know, came into existence in July 2017. Absolutely a new subject for us. Therefore, I don't have any expertise in GST. I have no, don't have much knowledge and after retirement, I am doing a lot of arbitration cases and some opinions on GST and income tax when they come to me. Therefore, I cannot comment on GST the way our finance minister from Tamil Nadu can come in. Right. But I have been reading newspapers, debates on GST. And the debates particularly between the central government and the state government. I have heard also some debates by him, the finance minister, protesting against some levies, saying how it is unfair to the states. I have also heard Mr. Amit Mitra, finance minister of West Bengal, he was also protesting. And also reading a number of uh, discussions that are taking place with regard to GST compensation. And I find that Shailendra Kumar has dealt with these developments, affecting the federal structure, uh, which took place in the last five years, and in the book included those relating to GST Council. There was a debate as to whether GST Council is fair, and there was also a debate during Mr. Jetley's time, they introduced whether GST Council should be headed by a judge. He said, no, not by a judge. Right. A GST Council, whether he would be fair. Then, GST compensation to states for loss of revenue. And the attempt by the union government to sometimes impose cess to circumvent GST so that cess cannot be shared with the states. Mind you, these are very, very important areas because through introduction of GST, my apprehension was federalism will be compromised. But at the same time, commerce, business and economy will develop progress because there will be no barriers and there will be an all India trade and commerce which the constitution also wants for the growth of the economy. Now, this he has captured and what is most interesting is during the COVID period, the economy could not generate much of revenue to the GST. The central government did not know how to compensate the state with the GST compensation assured and a lot of debate took place. There was an opinion of the Attorney General taken that in this situation, they need not pay the GST compensation. May defer it. But then ultimately it has been sorted out as pointed out in the book by the 
central government borrowing and paying the GST compensation that is that, that committed to the states. Then during the COVID period, as you know, many businesses could not comply in time the requirements of some of the GST provisions. And there was an amendment in uh, uh, the Act, I think it's 168A, which provide for force measure situations to be met by the central government by making a notification or recommendation of the GST Council. So therefore, the book covers various developments which have taken place from 2017, including the developments which have, which have taken place during the COVID period and the new situations that arose. Mind you, Constitution of India, and I said, Constitutional law is made for hundreds of years for the country. And the Supreme Court has said some basic features cannot be altered. But the Supreme Court and the High Courts have to treat it as a, as a interpret the Constitution in a dynamic way. Where you same constitution remain, but as and when developments take place, the judges have to expand the meaning, expand the meaning of Article 21, expand this particular meaning of this particular provision, so and so forth, to take care of this, because it cannot be amended so easily. It will also affect the basic feature of the constitution. Today, you see the judgment has come, upholding the quota uh, for uh, economically weaker sections of people, new development. So, that's what happened while interpreting constitutional law by courts. But so far as law is concerned, in taxation law is concerned, here again the economy is developing very fast, changing very fast. And an alert government has to make provision in the taxing provision of GST to take care of new situations. And one development is the force majeure provision that is incorporated now to take care of uh, no, calamities and unforeseen circumstances. So all this there in his book, anybody who reads it will understand and appreciate the book. Finally, I would like to say that taxation as a subject, whether income tax law or um, GST or sales tax, is a drab subject. If you give, him, give anybody a book, you will not like to read it, except for those who have got a lot of interest in, in taxation, those who are taxing, lawyer, taxing, lawyer, practicing in taxation. And uh, those who are judges who are uh, tribal members, they have to read it. But generally, nobody would like to read taxation. It's such a drab subject. And uh, the author here, Mr. Shalant Kumar, has used his talents in language and style to make the subject very lucid, witty, and giving instances which will make the reading very interesting even for the general readers. So I am sure all of you who read these books will like it. I am yet to read it because I have not found the time to read the entire book. I have read some chapters. I am very busy. But if you really find time, please do read this book. Thank you. Thank you very much.